It was the aftermath of World War II. The United States had no shortage of trained pilots and surplus aircraft. In Delaware, a group of fighter pilots and support personnel, who only a year earlier had returned from fighting Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan, wanted to keep their skills fresh and continue to serve the state and nation. These airmen went on to establish Delaware's first Air National Guard unit. On September 6, 1946, the federal recognition and activation of the 142nd Fighter Squadron took place at a ceremony in the Wilmington Armory. So began the 75-year history of the DANG, the Delaware Air National Guard. Soon afterwards, the squadron received its first fighter planes, F-47N Thunderbolts, an upgraded version of the venerable P-47. Later that year, several support aircraft were added to include two L-5s and two AT-6 to assist in the training of new pilots. 1947 brought the addition of several more airplanes, including C-47s and a B-26. The intrepid airmen of the Dang learned how to fly them all. January, February, they got their P-47s. Those were followed by four uh, B-26 light bombers, which were used as target tows. They got a pair of C-47 uh, transports. Just three years later, the unit received its first jet-powered fighter bombers, Republic F-84 Seas Thunder Jets. In February 1951, Colonel William Spruance was assigned the task of reorganizing the air section of the state staff and establishing the headquarters. In May of that year, the unit was redesignated the 142nd Fighter Interceptor Squadron, and in September, the unit exchanged its F-84Cs for the F-94 Starfire aircraft to fit the unit's new mission. In 1951, Air National Guard units were federalized for the Korean conflict. The 142nd was never sent to the Korean Peninsula and were released from active duty on November 1, 1950. A month later, on December 1, 1952, the unit was redesignated the 142nd Fighter Bomber Squadron and reverted to a propeller-driven aircraft, the North American F-51H Mustang, much to the chagrin of the pilots who cherished the faster jet fighters. Later that year, the unit received the latest F-86 Sabre jets, replacing the prop-driven F-51 Mustangs. In July 1956, Major David F. McAllister, 142nd Fighter Bomber Squadron Commander, set a fighter record by flying his F-86 Sabre jet 1,922 miles in 3 hours 30 minutes to win the Earl T. Ricks Memorial Trophy. McAllister's strategy was to use a single wing-mounted auxiliary fuel tank to make his plane lighter and faster, and though he had to make an additional refueling stop, the increased speed more than made up for it. He studied uh, the route, and uh, there, there's a couple of different strategies you can use when you're trying to fly cross countries and, and, and trying to set a record. The F-86, oddly enough, was a little slower at high altitude than it was at low altitude. So you could go low and fast, or you could go high and slow. If you go high and slow, you might not only need one refueling, but if you go low and fast, you might need two refueling. So McAllister told this story about he had uh, heard from uh, in Korea they didn't always have enough drop tanks. And so once in a while they would fly a mission with just one drop tank. And he got the idea, well, maybe I don't, and he did the computations, and he figured out a way, he, he thought, if I fly with one drop tank, I get kind of the, the best of both worlds. And so uh, that's what he did. And he, we had uh, uh, fellows from the unit here uh, stationed at, uh, at a, he had two refueling stops. I, one was in um, Nevada and the other one, um, I think it was in Texas someplace, but uh, so they were they practiced and practiced and they, they did all kinds of stuff. It's like a pit, pit stop uh, at Indianapolis 500. The, the whole idea is to get down on the ground, get refueled and get back in the air in two or three minutes. On June 4, 1961, Colonel David McAllister, commander of the 142nd Tactical Fighter Squadron, and Brigadier General William W. Spruance, Assistant Adjutant General for Air, were flying a T-33 jet trainer out of Scott Air Force Base in Illinois when the aircraft lost power and crashed and burned. Colonel McAllister died, and General Spruance received serious burn injuries. And the uh, airplane, of course, you know, caught on fire and was demolished. McAllister was killed on imp impact. Uh, Spruance was in the back seat, and um, he, uh, there was a little creek, evidently, right next to the airplane, and he got out and just kind of tumbled into the creek and uh, got away from the fire. But he was very, very severely burned. In March 1962, 
Lieutenant Colonel Clarence E. Atkinson was named commander of the 142nd Tactical Fighter Squadron. On April 7, 1962, the Delaware Air National Guard enlarged to group status as the 166th Air Transport Group and was reassigned from the Tactical Air Command to the Military Air Transport Service. The Delaware Air National Guard gave up its F-86 jets for the four-engine C-97 Stratocruiser cargo planes. On October 22, 1962, a new unit, the 142nd Aeromedical Evacuation Flight, was added to the Delaware Air National Guard. The uh, airplanes were convertible over into uh, litters and so on, and um, it, it was just a logical thing to do. And uh, it was a great thing for the unit because uh, it's another, uh, another mission. Uh, by the way, that's not the only mission we picked up. I think we picked up a comm, a comm mission and you know, some other cats and dogs al along the way. The, we went from a squadron to a group, uh, you know, and so the, the unit got bigger, the airplanes got bigger, the crews, you know, everything got bigger. 